It is you who have in your hands the, the decision as to who will be those who will join the, in, the, in the Legislative Assembly to form the next government. It's going to be an interesting election, isn't it shaping up to be? So for those of you who like contests, <laughs> I'm sure you're looking care carefully to how things will unfold in the days ahead. And we have two of our members who are, who are candidates in this election. Um, and we want to remember them in our prayers this morning. And I know we have done this before, but we can't overdo it. So let me ask Walin and, and Marco, if you will, just to stand where you are. Um, because let, let me just check if there are any other candidates who are here this morning. I know a few weeks ago we had one who was visiting our service. All right. We want to wish both of you well. You're running against each other. <laughs> in, 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 in the same, in the same um, district. But of course, with, with six seats available, there's every chance that both of you might, might be representatives in the Legislative Assembly. We wish you well, and we want you to know that our prayers and support are with you even though you're from two different parties. <laughs> and we have appreciated how you have conducted yourselves both towards each other and, and in, this, in this campaign. And we pray God's blessing on your ministry, in maybe your ministry in the Legislative Assembly. <laughs> Certainly for now, your ministry as you run as candidates in this, in this election. Let's pray for them and let's ask God's blessing on his word this morning. Let's pray. Lord, once again, we remember Marco and Wallen before you. Even as we remember, Lord God, all the candidates in the upcoming election. And we remember the opportunity this evening as we gather to pray for them. And we thank you, O oh God, for their willingness to serve. And we pray, God, that you may continue to uphold them and enable them to uphold godly standards. And so, Father, we pray, God, that you may direct their lives and that if it is, their, if it is your will that they should be selected, O oh God, that you will direct the course of these elections. We commit it into your hands and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Now we pray, O oh God, that your your Spirit, may hover over this place. Cause your word, O oh God, to go forth with power. And cause hearts to be stirred, Lord God, as we look to you by your spirit to renew and transform our lives. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer, Amen. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday, as I said, when we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit to the early followers of Christ. It is often considered, as, of course, as the birthday of the church. For out of that event of the Spirit's coming, the church was born body of believers, followers of Christ, endued with his spirit and sent on a mission to make disciples. Out of that stirring was born that body of Christ. And it has been alive down through the ages. And Pentecost was originally a Jewish holiday. As a matter of fact, Pentecost is really the Greek name of that holiday, the Hebrew name, Shavuot, really referred to a festival or a, or a celebration of the giving of the law to the Israelites on Mount Sinai, as well as a thanksgiving for the harvest. And it was celebrated 50 days after 
Passover. Passover celebrated their, their exodus out of Egypt under Moses' leadership. And 50 days later, they received the law on Mount Sinai. And that festival, that celebration, Shavuot, became something that was a regular part, one of the, the three main feasts that were celebrated by the Israelites each year. And because it was so important, it was one of those feasts, one of those celebrations that people would come to Jerusalem for. So the Jews from all over the Roman Empire would come to, to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. So during the time of Jesus, after his death and resurrection, he had said to his disciples, I want you to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of my Father, the gift of his Holy Spirit. And his disciples in obedience were waiting. After his resurrection, Jesus said to them, in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you will receive power, Jesus told them, when the Holy Spirit comes on you. He went on to tell them that that would make them his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the, of the earth. That was the purpose of the power. That was the purpose of the presence of the Spirit in their lives that they may be his witnesses. And I want to say three things this morning about the work of the Holy Spirit as we commemorate this Pentecost Sunday. I want to say, first of all, that the Spirit was promised. Secondly, that the Spirit came. And that thirdly, the Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation for life. The Holy Spirit was promised. When the day of Pentecost came, as Luke records it in the book of Acts, it wasn't just some kind of fluke experience that, was, that nobody knew about. The work of the Holy Spirit wasn't something that was just kind of coming up among God's people for the first time. Jeremiah had prophesied of the day when there was coming an, a new covenant, I will make with the people of Israel, says God. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people and they will not need to teach their neighbors nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already, says the Lord. There is coming a day when the things that they need to know will be resident in them because my spirit will be in them. Of course, in Old Testament time, when we read through the work of the spirit in the Old Testament, the work of the spirit was often for a specific person at a specific time for a specific purpose. And Jeremiah was pointing to a day when the work of the Spirit would be available in every person who was a follower of Christ. So Joel similarly looks to that day when the work of the Spirit would be available and manifested in the work and life of every believer. And it shall come to pass, says Joel, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. There is coming a day when the Holy Spirit will be available. Not just to some. For some specific purpose. But to all who believe. John the Baptist had pointed to the coming of Christ and that when Christ came, he would be the one who would baptize in the Spirit. 
I baptize you with water for repentance, says John. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He will immerse you with the Holy Spirit. He will be the one who will usher the pouring out of God's Spirit on all flesh. The Holy Spirit was promised. It wasn't just a fluke and strange experience coming up out of nowhere with nothing pointing to it. Jesus himself had said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing and they will do even greater works because I'm going to the Father. And in that same breath, as he tells them that he's going to his, fa to, to, to his Father, he says, I must go to the Father because if I do not go, the Holy Spirit cannot come. But I will send another counselor, he says, the Holy Spirit, and he will lead you into all truth. He will take my place, as it were. He will be here. I am here just with you here now, but the Holy Spirit will be able to be available with every believer everywhere at the same time. The Holy Spirit had been promised. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Luke goes on to describe what happened when the day of Pentecost came. As they were waiting in obedience to Jesus' instruction, the sound of violent wind, they saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire. And they all spoke in tongues. They all spoke in languages that they did not learn. And with all that was going on, all that, that was happening in this, this Pentecost experience, it caused a commotion and crowds began to gather and wondered what was going on. And as the crowds gathered in response to this event, the coming of the Spirit, which obviously had some manifested, some obvious manifestation, as they gather, some are bewildered and amazed, says says. Luke. Some are wondering what's going on. Some are interested in what's happening and are asking, what does this mean? But there are some who are ridiculing what they see. And they are saying, these men are crazy. They are drunk. All that is going on is just an indication of their intoxication. But I thank God for the disciples, for they were eagerly expecting the promise of the Holy Spirit. And in that place of eager expectation, the promised Holy Spirit came And ever since the day of Pentecost, friends, the work of the Holy Spirit in the church has received all kinds of varied responses. Down to today, some are bewildered and amazed. Down to today, some are, like the disciples, eager and expectant of the work of the Spirit in their lives. And they are just waiting with bated breath. Don't today, there are some who are interested and are asking, what does this mean? Probably confused, probably wanting to know more, what does this mean? But don't today, there are some who would ridicule the work of the Spirit and say, the manifestations of the Spirit are nothing but people's intoxication with emotionalism, intoxication with false doctrines, intoxication with 
probably even demonic spirits. They ridicule the work of the Spirit. And I wonder this morning, friends, what is your reaction when you hear or read about the work of the Spirit? What is your reaction? Are you like the disciples in obedience to Jesus, eagerly awaiting the coming of the Spirit, eagerly awaiting the work of His Spirit in your life, the work of His Spirit in this church? Or are you ridiculing? Or are you fearful of the work of the Spirit? For friends, our attitudes towards the Holy Spirit can quench His activity in our lives. Our attitude towards the Spirit can quench His activity in our congregation. What God requires of us is an expectation, a heart and an attitude of expectation. That just as how the Holy Spirit was promised to the disciples, he continues to be promised to his church all the years, though, all through the years. And that each of us needs to be in that place of expectation and longing for him to be manifested more fully in our lives and in the life of our congregation. The Holy Spirit was promised. And the Holy Spirit came. And the Holy Spirit longs to come in the life, come more fully in the life of every believer and in the life of every congregation so that his presence may be fully manifested in your life and in the life of this church. Are you at a place where your attitude is open to his coming? Or is your attitude such that it might quench his activity in your life? Friends, as I, as I reflect this morning on this quest for renewal that our church is on, I am reminded of something that I believe the Lord reminded us of last year during our season of prayer. And it is this. That there can be no renewal without the Holy Spirit. That if we want to see renewal in our lives, if we want to see renewal in our church, there can be no renewal without the Holy Spirit at work bringing that renewal. And so I want to say, friends, that the Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation for life. Now, at our synod, when we looked at that theme, renewal and transformation for life, that life part of the theme was really an acrostic that spelled Praise the Lord. <laughs> that spelled liberty, integrity, faith, and environmental stewardship. I want to I want to create another acrostic this morning. So I'm piggybacking on the theme, but I want to spell something different this morning. The Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation, I want to say, first of all, because the Holy Spirit comes into the life of a believer and brings liberty. When the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit brings liberty. Second Corinthians and Chapter 3 and verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, 
And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When the Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, the disciples demonstrated a liberty in praising God. They demonstrated a liberty in proclaiming the good news. When the Spirit is at work in a congregation, friends, there is liberty. Liberty to praise God. Liberty to live out God's life through our day-by-day -day existence. Liberty to be open to how the Spirit may move as He desires. Liberty to the gifts and operations of the Spirit. And we have to ask ourselves the question this morning. Is there some way in which we need to be more liberated? Are there things in our attitude and in how we operate and in our response to each other that shuts them down and shuts down the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst? When the Spirit is at work in a congregation, there is liberty. I wonder this morning, we need some of that liberty which the Holy Spirit can bring. But then secondly, the Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation for life because when the Holy Spirit comes, he brings intensity. He brings intensity. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were transformed from half-hearted fishermen to purpose-driven missionaries. The very description that Luke gives in, in, in the book of Acts of the sound of the wind and the commotion that attracted attention suggests an increased intensity of God's activity. When the Holy Spirit comes, in the life of a believer, when the Holy Spirit comes in the life of a, of a congregation, He brings intensity. You know, one of the things that when I, when I think about intensity, I think about a, a, a little boy that I saw yesterday at a birthday party. A little boy about four years. But just going, 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 going. And he's, you know, in and out the pool and he wants this ball and that ball. And, and just constantly going. And I wonder sometimes, friends, if when we look at our lives, if we don't feel like there is some of that intensity has been lost. Some of that, that enthusiasm has been lost. I, I wonder if you've gotten to a point where you've gotten a little cold in your spiritual temperature. Your spiritual temperature has gone a little bit south. Because maybe you and I need to ask the Holy Spirit to renew our intensity, to renew our passion, to renew our sense of importance of what God is doing in our lives and, in, and what he wants to do in the life of this congregation. And the Holy Spirit brings that intensity, brings that renewal in our lives. The Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation for life. Thirdly, because when the Holy Spirit comes, he brings fruit. He brings fruitfulness. And when the disciples on that day of Pentecost were responding to all the questions that came their way and all the ridicule, there was a boldness that welled up in them. These disciples' faith was bolstered by the Holy Spirit. And they testified of the wonders of God. And when the crowds came running with their questions and their ridicule, they did not go on the ground, but they stood up and spoke boldly. 
And the end result was that some 3,000 persons were won to Christ that day. The work of the Holy Spirit bore fruit as they responded in obedience to his leading. And he will bear fruit in our lives as we respond in obedience to his leading. When the Spirit is at work in your life, friends, and in the life of a congregation, your ministry is fruitful and our faith grows. You know, Wednesday we gathered for prayer. And one of the things that we considered was the fact that we are such an active church. So many things are happening. And yet we're not seeing the fruit of some of that labor. We're not seeing the kind of growth that we believe should be happening. As a matter of fact, instead we are seeing attrition and decline. And it might really be a sense in which there is need for a spiritual presence, a spiritual stirring to bring the fruitfulness. For it is not in our strength. It's not by might. Not by my power. Not by my strength, but by your power, saith the Lord. I wonder, friends, if there are ways in which you look at, the, at your own life and you're thinking that, well, it is, it is what you do that will really make the difference. It is what the Holy Spirit does through you that will make the difference. For when the Holy Spirit is present in the midst of our lives and in the midst of our church, there is faith to see financial miracles. There is faith to see healing miracles. There is faith to see lives transformed. And that's what God wants to do in our midst, friends. The Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation. For the Holy Spirit brings fruitfulness to our efforts. And then finally, the Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation for life because when the Holy Spirit comes, He brings empowerment. The Holy Spirit brings empowerment. Jesus had told them, wait for the power. When it comes, you will be my witnesses and not before. Sometimes we want to do God's work in our own strength, in our own power. Wait for the power, says Jesus. Sometimes we are doing lots of things for the Lord. Or we want to do lots of things for the Lord. But we don't see the result because our efforts lack spiritual power. God would call us this morning to wait for the power. To look to the Holy Spirit for that power. For that enabling. So that our lives may be fruitful and our lives may demonstrate the presence of God's Spirit presence of God's enabling power to overcome some of the challenges and the difficulties that we have in our lives. Oh friends, the Holy Spirit was promised. The Holy Spirit came and he wants to come again repeatedly in our lives so that we may experience all that God wants for our lives. The Holy Spirit brings renewal and transformation for life. And he wants to do that in your life. He wants to do that in this church so that your life and this church may be more fruitful and may demonstrate the power of God in our midst. I wonder this morning, friends, 
if there are things in your own life and attitude, things in your own background that have planted fears in your heart and mind about the work of the Holy Spirit, that have planted prejudices and negative ideas, and you have been a part of the bandwagon that have ridiculed the work of the Spirit. Maybe this morning is a turning point. That in the moment of our looking to God this morning, we may look with new eyes of expectation, new eyes of longing, new eyes of waiting, for his Holy Spirit to make that difference in our lives. Shall we pray? What might be in your way this morning? What might be the thing that stops you from growing in your walk with the Spirit? What is your attitude this morning towards this Holy Spirit? God wants to bring the liberty that His Spirit brings. God wants to bring the intensity that His Spirit brings, the passion, the commitment. God wants to bring the fruitfulness that His Spirit brings. And He wants to bring the power. He wants to empower you to be His witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer this morning. Visit us, we ask you, by your Spirit. Do more than we can even ask or imagine as we open our hearts to the work of your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us to stand together and share in this prayer of renewal. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, at the beginning of time you moved over the face of the waters. You breathed into every living being the breath of life. Holy Spirit, voice of the prophets, you inflame men and women with a passion for your truth, and through them call your people to the ways of justice and compassion. Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus, by your power, Jesus came to bring good news to the poor and release to those held captive. Holy Spirit, Advocate, Teacher, you speak to us of our Lord and show us the depth of his love. Holy Spirit, wind and flame, you fill disciples with joy and courage, empowering them to preach your word and to share your good news. Holy Spirit, Spirit of peace, you break down barriers of language, race, and culture and heal the divisions that separate us. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, at the close of the age, all creation will, renew, will be renewed to sing your praises. 
Come create a spirit and make us new creations of Jesus Christ. Amen.